The story that you are about to hear is a compilation of documented true facts, featuring characters, events, or places that has played a role in shaping history. Please sit back and listen as I recite this narrative for you. Ellsworth Raymond Bumpy Johnson was an American gangster in Harlem, New York in the 20th century. He has been the subject or character of a number of Hollywood films including The Cotton Club, Hoodlum, and most recently American Gangster. His wife called him the Harlem Godfather. He ruled the neighborhood and dispatched any who dared challenge him in brutal fashion. One rival named Ulysses Rollins caught the business end of Johnson's switchblade 36 times in a single street fight. During another confrontation, Johnson saw Rollins in a dinner club and pounced on him with a blade, quickly leaving his eyeball dangling from its socket before he returned to his table and proclaimed that he suddenly had a craving for spaghetti and meatballs. However, Johnson was also known as a gentleman who was always quick to help out fellow Harlem residents. Meanwhile, he was a fashionable man about town who was known to rub elbows with celebrities like Billie Holiday and Sugar Ray Robinson. Johnson was originally from Charleston, South Carolina. He was born on October 31, 1905 to Margaret Moultrie and William Johnson. During his formative years, his family moved north to Harlem. He was given the name Bumpy due to an abnormal growth in his head. After his older brother was wanted for the murder of a white man, his parents were afraid of a possible lynch mob. His parents mortgaged their tiny home to raise money to send Willie up north to live with relatives. As Johnson grew older, his parents worried about his short temper and insolence toward whites, and in 1919, he was sent to live with his older sister, Mabel, in Harlem. Despite moving up north, there was no avoiding the scourge of racism, and Johnson, with his small frame and thick southern accent, was a target for bullying. However, Johnson's bad temper kept him from being a hapless victim, and starting at an early age, he learned how to be a scrappy fighter. A high school dropout, Johnson worked odd jobs and hang around an unsavory crowd, which brought him to the attention of gangster William Bob Hewlett. Through Hewlett, Johnson became a highly regarded bodyguard for high-rolling illegal gamblers in Harlem, and this was the beginning to his life of crime. Known for his flashy style and dapper look, Johnson was at various times a pimp, a thief, and a burglar. He was always armed and did not hesitate to resort to violence to achieve his objectives. By his 30th birthday, Johnson had spent almost half his life in prison. During those periods of incarceration, he read incessantly and developed an affinity for writing poetry. Some of his poems were published during the Harlem Renaissance. Despite his talent, his constant clashes with other inmates and guards resulted in spending more than three years of a 10-year sentence for burglary in solitary confinement. Because of his difficult and abrasive attitude, Johnson was transferred to various prisons until his release in 1932. Upon his release from prison, he was financially destitute and desperate for employment. Returning to the streets, Johnson met and became an associate of mob boss Stephanie St. Clair, who dominated the numbers racket in Harlem. He quickly gained her trust and became her principal lieutenant. It was rumored in some circles that the two of them were romantically involved, although she was 20 years older. Truthfully, the reason that Johnson isn't a household name for his crimes was that he wasn't the one in the spotlight. While he worked behind the scenes to commit many heinous crimes, he did so in a powerful woman's shadow, Stephanie St. Clair. While Johnson pulled off significant murders, kidnappings, and burglaries, Stephanie was the true face of terror. She was the head of a number of criminal enterprises throughout Harlem. She was incredibly empowered, resisting merging with the mafia for the entirety of her reign. 
and for a crime-savvy man like Bumpy, she seemed to be his perfect match. Johnson and St. Clair attempted to wage a futile war against New York mob boss Dutch Schultz. The fight between St. Clair and Johnson against Dutch Schultz and other organized crime factions in the early 1930s resulted in over 40 murders and several kidnappings. With control over police protection and influence at City Hall, Schultz and his allies in the Mafia eventually dominated the Harlem numbers rackets. Johnson, who had earlier fought against Schultz and the Mafia, was eventually won over by the promise that he would run the Harlem operations in exchange for protection by the Mafia, then led by Charles Lucky Lociano. The arrangements lasted for four decades. In spite of his tough guy persona, Bumpy Johnson became known to Harlemites for his help of cash and gifts to many impoverished blacks in the community. Even though the community greatly feared Johnson, they also loved and respected him. Often referred to as Robin Hood, Johnson gave to the most vulnerable among his fellow Harlemites, handing out free turkeys during Thanksgiving and delivering meals and gifts. In 1951, Johnson received a 15-year prison sentence for conspiring to sell heroin in New York serving most of his time at Alcatraz Prison in San Francisco Bay, California. He was released from prison in 1936, five years before his death. With a rap sheet of over 40 arrests in his lifetime, Johnson found himself under the watchful eye of authorities. Enraged by their relentless surveillance, he staged a sit-down strike at a police station in 1965. Although he was charged for refusing to leave the station, he was later acquitted. Johnson was under a federal indictment for drug conspiracy when he died of congestive heart failure on July 7, 1968 at the age of 62. He was at Wells Restaurant in Harlem shortly before 2 a.m. and the waitress had just served him coffee, a chicken leg, and hominy grits when he killed over clutching his chest. Friend Frank Lucas claims to have been present and someone ran down to the street to the Rhythm Club to get his childhood friend Julie Beard. When Beard arrived, Lucas cradled Bumpy in his arms and Johnson briefly opened his eyes and smiled, then fell into unconsciousness. He was taken by ambulance to Harlem Hospital where he was pronounced dead. He is buried in Woodlawn Cemetery in the Bronx, New York City. Hey everyone, I just wanted to express how grateful I am that you took the time to listen to my narration. Hopefully you enjoyed it. I am Twisted Mind and please enjoy the rest of your day. Salamat.